Welcome to the SCA Hygiene Matters Podcast, part of a global initiative to spark conversation around hygiene issues around the world. May 5th is World Hand Hygiene Day, sponsored by the World Health Organization. The day celebrates the real hygiene heroes, healthcare professionals, and all they do to make hospital environments safe. We'll be talking today about a recent study by Vinova, which looked at ways to decrease healthcare-associated infections. Our guests today are Brigitte Bergstrom, a microbiologist involved in the Vinova Project, and Carolyn Berland, a senior scientist in R&D at SCA. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Hi, Hi, Beryl. Hey, it's great to have you. It seems that the biggest consequence of poor hand hygiene compliance in healthcare settings is the risk of healthcare-associated infections. Can you talk about these? How big of a threat are they? Well, Farrell, healthcare-associated infections are a big problem, and they're a big problem in every country in the world. I just want to give you some numbers. For example, in the EU, it's estimated that 4 million people a year will get a healthcare-associated infection, and that means they'll get an infection they would not have gotten if they hadn't been in the hospital. And most of these are minor, but some of them can be quite severe. For example, the EU estimates that maybe 37,000 people die directly as a result of a healthcare-associated infection. And it's a big problem in the U.S. too. Uh, one in 25 patients on any given day have a healthcare-associated infection, and it leads to a lot of unnecessary suffering. People have to stay in the hospital longer. They need more medications. They have more pain. And it just takes them longer to get well and get back to their business. So that's a pretty significant problem. How can hand hygiene help prevent the risk of these infections? Well, the thing is that a lot of the time when you get an infection, it happens because a bacteria or a virus moves from somewhere where it wasn't causing any problem to somewhere else where you can get sick. For example, moving from one patient to another patient, moving from the surroundings to other surroundings, or moving from a part of your body where the bacteria is not bothering you to, say, a cut or a wound, it can cause an infection. So when you do proper hand hygiene, what you do is you get rid of the bacteria or the virus on your hands, and that means you stop the transmission between the sites. And if you can do that, you can reduce the amount of infection significantly. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. So what are some steps healthcare professionals, patients, and those visiting patients can take to reduce the spread of infection? Well, I think everybody has different roles to play. So if we're talking about visitors or uh, other people who are just incidentally in the room, the biggest thing you can do is hand hygiene for sure. And that is make sure you're not bringing germs from outside the hospital into the hospital. And also hand hygiene when you go home. You don't want to take germs from the hospital into your home. As far as healthcare professionals are concerned, hand hygiene is very important for them as well. And it's a big part of their day. They are already doing it a lot and doing it very well. And then they have other things that they can do to help other type of healthcare associated infections. For example, the biggest healthcare associated infection is catheter associated infections. And most healthcare facilities have checklists or other procedures they do to provide good, clean catheter care to prevent those infections. So it's a combination of things. Well, thanks, Carolyn. Now let's discuss the Vinova iTech study. What findings from the study help reinforce these steps? Brigida? Yes, let me tell you a little bit about the study. iTech stands for Intelligent Textiles for a Healthier Hospital, and that was the focus. And in our study, we sampled more than 120 surfaces close to the patient and analyzed the number of bacteria and the composition of the bacterial community. And we did this repeated times in a cardiac care and a neonatal ward. And uh, the study showed that patient near surfaces, for example, bed rails and the headboards, can harbor potentially pathogenic bacteria. And proper hand hygiene after contact with this type of surfaces can help prevent cross-contamination and potentially reduce healthcare-associated infections. And uh, we also looked into cleaning of these surfaces and, of course, Except from proper hand washing, cleaning and sanitation of these surfaces is of great importance. So how can this research help healthcare workers in reducing healthcare associated infections via hand hygiene? I think we can uh, communicate the results from this study to 
help to raise the awareness among the healthcare workers of the possible risk of transmission of pathogens from these surfaces. And I think that would be a good help. Interesting. The World Health Organization talks about five moments for hand hygiene before touching a patient, before a procedure, after body fluid exposure or risk, after touching a patient, and finally, after touching patient surroundings. I understand this fifth moment is often missed. Why is this important? Yes, the five moments for hand hygiene is a simple guide that helps to remind and instruct the healthcare workers when, why, and how to wash their hands. The purpose is to break the route of transmission of microorganisms that might give rise to a healthcare-associated infection. You should, for example, of course, wash your hands before touching the patient, and this is the first moment. But based on what our study, as well as others, has shown, it is also important to do so after touching the patient's surroundings. And this is the fifth moment of hand washing. That's interesting, Brigida. Research shows that hand soap, sanitizer, and hand towel dispensers have an impact on hand hygiene compliance rates. What is it about these dispensers that helps change or influence behavior? Carolyn? Yeah, well, you know, Farrell, this seems like such a simple thing, it couldn't possibly matter, but research shows that really having good dispensers and having the dispensers in the right place makes a huge difference for compliance. And in one study we've done, we've seen a 50% improvement in compliance by placing dispensers in a good way. And I think this happens for several reasons. One is that healthcare workers are really busy people, and they're performing hand hygiene very often. So just the fact that you have the dispenser in a convenient location, that you don't have to take extra steps to get the alcohol sanitizer or the soap or the towels or whatever you need, makes a big difference. But there are other factors that are also important. And one is just that when you're doing something several times a day, hundreds of times a day maybe, it's easy to forget, did I do it a minute ago? And having the dispenser right there at eye level can really help remind you that, ah, yes, I'm entering patient zone. I should take some alcohol and sanitize my hands just to help keep it top of mind. And I think the third big thing that happens is when you have nice dispensers that are well-designed and fit for the purpose, then the management is really sending a signal to the people who are working in the ward that this hospital or this clinic cares about hygiene and we think it's worth investing in. That's interesting. So the call to action around World Hand Hygiene Day is fight antibiotic resistance, it's in your hands. What can healthcare workers and people listening to this podcast do to help fight against healthcare-associated infections in the context of hand hygiene? Well, practicing good hand hygiene helps to prevent infections and thereby reduce the need for using antibiotics. Careful stewardship with antibiotics is an important part of our toolkit for handling antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Yeah, I agree with everything Brigitte said, and I'd just like to add that I think that healthcare workers are very well aware of the need for good hand hygiene. And I think they're already working very hard. But what this day can be is a little reminder to keep it top of mind, to keep it in focus and keep up the good work. And also, I suggest that it might be a good idea to use one of the excellent systems out there to follow up on compliance at your institution and make sure that it's where you want it to be. And also give yourself a pat on the back when you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Carolyn and Brigitte, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Yes, thank you. That concludes our episode. Each day, more than 500 million people rely on SCA's hygiene products to help them live healthier lives. But millions more go without even the most basic hygiene needs and are often left to suffer in silence. Where there is silence, there's isolation. If you'd like to help make a difference, join us in the global conversation at hygienematters.com. <laughs>